so we are back with another showdown in the badlands card review and my god look at this card don't worry it's not collectible this is the excavate treasure card for warlock you can't put this in your decks but it's still gonna be completely <laughs> insane i think we're gonna talk more about this alongside a bunch more warlock cards also going to do a quick catch up on some hunter cards although i'll be saving my reviews for those until we get the rest of the hunter cards revealed so let's kick things off here talking about the azurite snake uh, as is always the case of course with these treasure rewards as you excavate the new keyword you're going to get a random treasure from the tier one those are the one cost commons then the next time you excavate you get that tier two the rare then the epic and then the fourth time you excavate you get this guy if you're a warlock he's the four mana treasure a five five elemental beast battle cry your hero steals 10 health from the enemy hero now a couple things to note that doesn't say deal 10 damage life steal it's not just damage it's actually taking the health so for instance we got some examples of how this is going to work on on reddit from a software engineer on the blizzard team if the opposing hero is at 25 and you're at 10 if you play this they're going to go down to 15 active current health they're also going to lose 10 health off their max so if they started at 30 max they would go down to 20 so they can't even heal this back off that 10 is gone from the top forever so yeah, if you bounce this back to hand and play like two of these, for instance, the opponent would be at 10 max health. You play that third one, obviously that's gonna be game over at that point because they're at 10 max health, unless you know they have one of these themselves or other ways to gain max health. So again, stealing from the max health is completely <laughs> insane. They also gave an example too, where if they're at like one health with a billion armor, it doesn't matter, this ignores the armor, goes straight to the health, the opponent dies i think they even said this ignores divine shield and immune as well because it's not damage it is stealing that health so a pyroblast plus because it also not only damages them now but steals that max health is completely crazy as i mentioned you can generate multiples of these if you have enough excavate cards in your deck you start the cycle back again on one and go to four so you could just make multiples of these with normal excavate cards or of course we got the like new brewmaster card they can just bounce this back to hand and replay it on turn 10 you could play two of these to deal 20 to the opponent because this is that battle cry so this is an absolutely bonkers treasure reward i mean completely insane game ending sort of card not to mention the heal is, is a nice bonus for you too because you can go to 40 health or whatever hey Great, even if I'm not in a lethal position yet, I'll just go up to 40. Cool, great for a control warlock. So, I, I mean, listen, this alone is enough to make the Excavate cards we're about to look at good because every Excavate card gets you closer to this absolute monstrosity of a card. Uh, so keep that in mind as we take a look at this uh, little batch of Excavate stuff uh, a little bit later on in the video. So before we move on to that Excavate stuff, we gotta talk about this freshly revealed and brand new archetype for warlock starting off here with pop guard the putrid a four mana two six your fell spells cost one less and have life steal and battle cry get two barrels of sludge now you may remember barrels of sludge we actually saw this previously from the tram mechanic a neutral card that was revealed it is a spell you generate when it's played, discarded, or destroyed, you deal three damage to the lowest health enemy. So, uh, of course, that is a way to clear up a board sometimes with small minions. And once you've cleared up the board, or if there are no minions on board, that can go face. And if you have a bunch of these in hand, Popgar is going to make them cost only one mana, which is a one mana deal three. So sometimes that could be a great way to just rip through a board and heal a bunch you know, cast uh, three or four of these because those aren't going to be the only two ways to get them. Spoiler alert, we're going to talk about a lot more ways to generate these. So, you know, rip off a hand of sludges, uh, you know, clear up a board, get a little bit of face damage extra, stabilize a ton of health. You could have, you know, a Reno-esque kind of healing turn on the back of Popgar while also sometimes 
just killing the opponent if they don't have any stuff this presumes or this presents a lot of lethal potential so pretty crazy now i know you're thinking also like what other fell spells exist there's basically nothing right now this is almost exclusively for the barrels of sludge at the moment of course that's something to keep in mind for later too this could actually be beyond barrels of sludge because of that fell discount but right now standard format at least doesn't have a lot to work with there nonetheless this looks like a really big kind of combo card sometimes for lethal and a board swing card which makes this a package that could maybe be built towards exclusively as your way to win and play like a combo deck almost to support this where you run like board clears and pop gar and try to run face or this could be a package you slot into other shells as well like a control deck for instance uh commit a handful of these barrel of sludge cards almost use them for life gain or board clear as opposed to lethal but reserve that lethal potential that does exist so i like that flexibility a lot and the output on this card actually seems kind of crazy high. So if you were worried you weren't gonna have enough barrels of sludge, we'll take a look here at Sludge on Wheels, a new three mana one five. This has Rush, and whenever this takes damage, you get a barrel of sludge and add one to the bottom of your deck. Keep that bottom of your deck part in mind. Uh, but this of course can get you a barrel of sludge right away. And obviously in Warlock with cards like Defile, this could actually get you a bunch of barrels of sludge right away. It doesn't have to survive the damage notably too. So this could just throw itself away in exchange for a barrel of sludge. But you could easily see this getting you two barrels of sludge in many cases. Use this to take a bad trade probably with only one attack. It's left behind, the opponent cleans it up with a minion or whatever. You got yourself two barrels of sludges for later. Now, I will say this is definitely a down tempo play right away. Uh, this is not doing much to most board states. Yeah, if the opponent has exactly a board of one ones, maybe this does some work. But usually, you know, this has to hit into a three three or something and you feel like you've kind of wasted your three mana turn. So there are going to be some sacrifices along the way while perhaps setting up uh, these barrels of sludge and making sure uh, you know, you have that kind of time to recover might be tough on occasion if you fall too far behind with too much setup and payoff that doesn't quite come quickly enough. So, you know, if you don't find your pop gar in time, maybe you don't get that lifesteal aspect in time. There's some deck building challenges there. I think this package has enough output to overcome those challenges. I think people will find a list that makes a lot of sense. That said, I don't know if Sludge on Wheels is actually guaranteed. Maybe just some sort of defile bait for late nice rhyme and you don't actually really play this ever on turn three is also a possibility for this one but it does so much potentially that it's certainly a card i would still keep an eye on moving on here to the disposal assistant this is a two mana three two this one's probably a little bit uh safer way to get some barrels uh this has battle cry and death rattle put a barrel of sludge on the bottom of your deck now again you're thinking bottom of deck regions i'm never going to draw these what the heck do I want to do with those? But do keep in mind, uh, this gets you two barrels, which is a lot for a two mana card. And you know, you don't love a three, two, obviously on, on turn two these days, but it's fine. It gets things moving, gets the gears turning for your deck, helps you keep up on board a little bit. And then you have payoffs like this, the waste remover at the end of your turn, destroy the bottom three cards of your deck. Keep in mind, the Barrel of Sludge, whenever it's destroyed, it deals three damage to the lowest health enemy. So this puts two sludges on the bottom of your deck. This puts a sludge at least on the bottom of your deck. And then the Waste Remover is a four mana seven seven. That's a big boy in his own right. And he potentially deals nine damage to the opponent's board or sometimes even the opponent's face, which is kind of crazy if you hit this all on curve um so uh, actually kind of a nutty package right a 7-7 that clears the board on turn four or a 7-7 that deals nine damage uh at the end of turn is crazy if it survives you know you could even set up for more for later clearly you know this is a downside and that's why this minion is able to be overstatted but obviously with the barrels of sludge it's not actually a downside you're hedging against that downside Ultimately, the bottom three cards of your deck anyway. A lot of decks might be okay to just run the four mana seven seven and say, yeah, screw the bottom of my deck. Even if I don't have barrels of sludge, I just like this big boy that can attack and do things, right? Uh, so, you know, kind of an interesting card that way, particularly with the Warlock location, they can copy these stats. We've already seen that run uh, with the four drop that can't attack. 
what if he could also just attack as well you know is that a possibility for other decks yeah but of course a great fit here as a payoff for the barrels of sludge and uh, i don't think he's the only one either we've also got fracking here a new one mana spell look at the bottom three cards of your deck draw one and destroy the others so really cool tracking style card here uh that you know might just give you one barrel of sludge and then destroy the other two that's not a bad result though that's a one mana deal six again could clean up a couple three threes can go face obviously this is an opportunity there other instances if you know if you only have one barrel of sludge or two you know put at the bottom so far this can actually just get you a real card from your deck as well which is nice and if you haven't shuffled any barrels of sludge in this can still be just a good tracking style effect where you say hey i'm just going to take the best card of these three cards the other two get destroyed okay whatever i'm not going to go to fatigue this game anyway i'm intending to win much sooner than that so Let's just find something good. Let's find a curve play. Let's find the best card down there and, uh, you know, cheat it to the top here and get it in hand instead. Um, so good tracking effect at a base and obviously some big payoff as well for Barrels of Sludge. Make this card look like a fantastic fit in the Sludge deck and perhaps still a pretty good card beyond that as well. And then finally here for the uh, sludge package, sort of uh, the furnace fuel here is a four mana fire spell. When this is played, discarded, or destroyed, you can draw two cards. So this is another one that if it happens to be on the bottom of your deck for the fracking or the waste remover, that is just another crazy upside. That said, not particularly likely for this to just happen to be on the bottom of your deck. That's gonna be pretty unlikely. Uh, you know, just because you're putting all the barrels with sludge there. This has to just naturally land there. Um, I guess, you know, you could do stuff like Sir Finley technically to help put stuff sort of near the bottom of your deck, or you can if you put it in the right spot in your hand, I guess. But that doesn't sound like it's going to be worth it. That sounds a little too clunky and a little too much work for uh, just drawing two cards, which, of course, Warlock has lots of ways to draw cards. And then spending four on this doesn't feel very good either. There might be some options here with uh, discard payoffs. We've got some things that discard spells. In particular, we saw the kind of um, trolley problem card that could discard a spell. So, you know, this definitely looks a little expensive at a base, a little clunky to activate in a variety of ways, both discard and otherwise. So definitely looks like the weakest of the Warlock cards here, but that's probably okay because a lot of these look totally insane and we still haven't gotten to the excavate stuff which it teased is completely bonkers so let's let's finally take a look at these excavate synergy cards as well all right so moving on to that excavate stuff we talked about this is tram conductor jerry a seven mana four four battle cry if you've excavated twice summon six three three tram cars with rush so this is the old uh soul fragment card from scolomance uh militia I think was her name uh but you don't have to have a bunch of soul fragments in your deck in this case you only have to have excavated twice by turn seven which does not seem like that's going to be challenging at all if you're running excavate stuff in your deck i think it's very very likely you're going to achieve that by turn seven which makes this a really nice flexible card because number one this can be a board clear if needed trading in all those three threes with rush or it can be a board threat sometimes as well if you're ahead just looking for something to do fill your turns put uh, the opponent in check a little bit then Tram Conductor Jerry is enough raw stats on board to create those pressure scenarios. So I think, of course, the most natural fit for all of this stuff is probably in some kind of control warlock shell that's looking to go mid to late game. Jerry is going to feel like a really good fit there as essentially another kind of board clear in effect or board swing more accurately. Uh, the Excavate package is going to play really nicely into that as we'll see these other Excavate cards fit really well into some slower game plans. Like this card's actually so insane as well and of course the azurite snake gives you survivability if needed but also just that game ending potential as well it feels like a perfect mix this really great concoction of cards that uh probably has a surprising amount of deck flexibility to be honest but is a really perfect fit in those control warlocks so moving on uh, we got an excavate card here the moarg drill fist a four mana four five mech and demon with taunt and death rattle excavate a treasure so of course this is going to be one of the ways you're moving towards uh that crazy as a right snake payoff and 
I sure don't think this feels terrible to play. I mean, no, of course, a four mana four or five taunt on its own is not exciting in this era of Hearthstone, but the fact that it's giving you one of those treasure cards, which keep in mind, the treasures themselves are also good. It's not just the snake that's the payoff. The treasures along the way are also awesome. So you're gonna have a little bit of an off turn on turn four, but then you're immediately gonna have some awesome payoffs probably on turn five to help you recover any of the small tempo sacrifice you made with the Moark Drill Fist. There's also some considerations here for like copying death rattle effects, getting duplicates of this, all of that accelerates you into faster snakes and more treasures, which are still, again, very good. So yeah, this feels like a perfect fit once again for a slower, more control-oriented Warlock. Just a little speed bump in the road against more aggressive decks while developing into that really powerful mid-game and that crazy powerful one-two punch of these two cards in particular. So looks like a great card. Next up here is the Smoke Stack, uh, another Excavate option. I do think this one's a little bit more challenging to work with, uh, but still probably pretty good. It's a one mana spell, a fell spell. It deals one damage to a minion, and if that minion dies, excavate a treasure. So basically, mortal coil, but treasures, treasure coil. And I will say, you know, mortal coil is a card that has not been hard to get value out of historically. There have been lots of instances uh, where that's lined up nicely. The only downside here is somewhat the opponent might be able to play around this a little bit if this deck became really prominent kind of like you played around the old like jaina hero power frostlitch jaina stuff back in the day those scenarios do exist if you're like okay god i cannot let them excavate to get to their snake or whatever there's maybe a little bit of clunkiness here but honestly warlock runs enough stuff like tour guides or whatever throw a couple tour guides in the deck you don't even care about the opponent you've got your own ways to activate the smoke sack will absolutely be worth it for any card that's already good i think even the two drop uh excavate neutral card is also one health so that could be just an insane one two punch that probably removes any of the uh the real downside here let's find that guy real quick just to double check i think he's a he's yeah he's a one one so yeah like this guy kobold miner into smokestack that's two excavates already not the strongest turn of course in its own right but treasures are insane the snake is insane so uh, yeah i mean again maybe slightly more awkward but definitely not a problem. Still gonna feel really good in this deck. So real quick, I just wanted to show these Hunter cards. They got revealed yesterday uh, due to some, of course, unfortunate news here in the US. Blizzard decided to hold uh, the remainder of the Hunter cards. So I'm gonna show you these just because you might be curious, of course, but I'll save these to review until we get the rest of the Hunter stuff uh, whenever those get revealed in the future. But this is Spurfang, a new legendary five mana two five. Battlecry Death Rattle summon a random beast with cost equal to this minion's attack. So uh, some more payoffs for the kind of hand buff stuff we saw. Both the Hunter legendary seem to support hand buff. The Silver Serpent, a three mana two three rush poisonous quick draw gain immune this turn. So board clear or minion clear removal on a body here is pretty cool with some beast upside saddle up give your minions death rattle so many random beasts that cost three or less so kind of um soul of the forest but for beasts in particular i'm worried about that three or less there are some low rolls there that could hurt uh and then sneaky snakes this just seems like a really good one drop option for a class with a bunch of buffs available I'm not reviewing we're just talking about it <laughs> it's a one mana spell summon two one one snakes snakes with stealth but that definitely looks like the standout of this group to me but we'll talk more about those in the future popgar the putrid is a five star card sludge on wheels is a three star card disposal assistant is a four star card waste remover is a four star card fracking is a four star card Furnace Fuel is a two-star card. Tram Conductor Jerry is a four-star card. Moarg Drill Fist is a four-star card. And Smokestack is a four-star card. And there you go, folks. That wraps it up for uh, this review. Warlock with this Excavate stuff looks crazy good to me. Like, this card is off the charts pushed, even as a token reward. I don't think it's going to be that hard to get to this, and it's just so crazy as soon as you start supporting it at all. So uh, really excited to play this, by the way. It looks really fun. <laughs> I was already excited about Excavate stuff, and this just took it to the stratosphere. So let me know what you think about this card and more down in the comments below. Thanks so much, as always, for watching, and until next time, game on.